This week, we have been looking at the difference this year, problems facing schools across the country as students head back after summer vacation. And we've been struck by the number of districts cutting back on supplies and forcing parents to pick up the slack. Here's Lindsay Davis. Pencils, check. Notebook, check. Toilet paper? Buying back to school basics just got very basic. Do you say that toilet paper is on your list? Yes, you have toilet paper, you have napkins. With state budgets shrinking, many schools are asking parents to buy a lot more than glue sticks to hold it all together. On this year's checklist, Dixie cups and paper plates in Joshua, Texas, mops and plastic utensils in Seattle, and first graders in Moody, Alabama have to bring in garbage bags. To expect all the parents to, you know, to, to spend that kind of money, you know, it, it's asking for a lot. What concerns parents like Peter is just last week, schools got $10 billion in emergency government funding. But instead of using it to pay for supplies or hire back teachers, some districts are hoarding the money, hoping it could prevent future layoffs. They've said, well, we might not have enough money next year, so we'll just not do anything this year. That doesn't make any sense. A kid only has one year to be a first grader. We did some homework of our own. The average family spends $96 on required school supplies, nearly 10% more than last year. And in places parents aren't picking up the bill, teachers like Ralph Lasano are digging even deeper. Before school's even started, I've spent probably about $400. Really? Of yeah, your own of money? Of my own money. So kids' back-to-school backpacks will be carrying a much heavier load this year. An early lesson in economics. Lindsay Davis, ABC News, New York. And when we